a part of the community organization since its inception. Thank you. And Francis? Hi, uh, Francis Spector, community member. Um, I'll be uh, taking over attendance uh, function from Charlesy uh, starting next month. Okay, thank you all. I turned off my video because it was blinking off. I think my video is dying, so, um, but I'm here. I'm, I'm done, hand it over. Oh, I don't know if anybody else is here that's not on online. You didn't uh, let Misty and Stefan introduce themselves and Charles. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Did you? Gosh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, yeah, Lindsay, we'll give you the floor. And thank you for your patience, everybody. I screwed up. Did you want to introduce yourself, Charles? <laughs> Yes, that would be oh, nice. There you are. Um, I'm Charles C. Cartwright. I live on Norman Avenue. I've been on the board. I'm not anymore. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Well, I I want to just kind of introduce myself, but also give you all a chance yes. to, to ask questions and get to know me a little bit. Um, I I've lived in the area for about 13 years, but I moved on to River Road about just over a year ago. Um, I've got two uh, kiddos that are six and nine and a stepdaughter that's 13. And so we very much enjoy being uh, about a block and a half from Maury Jacobs Park. And so just really low, I mean, the bike path, is what brought me to settle in Eugene. Honestly, like it was so beautiful and inviting and connecting for me as a young person. And, um, you know, when I, I became pregnant and my uh, husband at the time and I decided we wanted to settle down here, I thought this is the perfect place. Um, so I am so excited to live in this area so close where um, I can just walk there. <laughs> um, so I'm really interested in protecting our beautiful bike path area. Um, I've been kind of talking with John about the neighborhood plan. Um, I will be meeting with um, Terry Harding and Alyssa Hansen uh, from the city on Wednesday. Um, specifically, I requested this meeting to see how we can move forward um, with the plan and um, implement at least some pieces of it more quickly. <laughs> um, so trying to get that um, going in a more urgent way than I think it has been addressed so far, or rather in the past couple of years. Um, I am working also pretty intensively on the Zippo noise um, that is really affecting our neighborhoods. And that has been a struggle. You know, I would, I got pretty excited. We, we had the ordinance up and I was like, I'm going to make this an emergency measure. I'm going to do something about this. And I think, I mean, maybe that helped a little bit, um, but, you know, Zippo lawyered up. They hired all of the sound engineers in the state um, and pretty much. And so they just created this conflict of interest. So we're, we're aware we did the city hired another sound engineer. So they're trying their best. Um, but now this week I'm meeting again to see if we can vote on um, getting a better um, fee. Well, I say better, but a more intense fee um, for the violations of that, uh, because I think right now it's like $250 per violation and that's just not enough. So we're looking at an escalation clause that like it might double every single time they get a violation. Um, so I'm hoping some of these things are going to help because it's just awful. Um, gosh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions or if you have anything specific. Um, it has been a long day, President's Day, but I didn't get the day off, but my kids did. And that always gets me <laughs> discombobulated, to be honest.
So. Would anyone like to raise their hand to ask a question or make a comment to Lindsay? Beth? Yeah, Lindsay, I'm just curious where your kids go to school. Yeah, so uh, the 13 year old goes to Kelly Middle and she'll be going to North um, next year. And then my two, um, they their dad lives just out of town um, in the Alvador area. And um, so they go to Territorial Elementary where they've gone kind of their whole life. Um, so we made the decision not to pull them out of that school. But when they enter middle school, then we're going to have a serious conversation because I want them to go here. And I know their dad's going to want them to go to Junction City. And I don't want them to go to Junction City. So we'll see what happens. So I'm sure you've been following the conversation around Kelly. Yeah. I yeah. know it's not a council decision, but voices are good to have there. Voices are good to have there and would be happy to talk to you more about that. Absolutely. Great. I'd love to. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, we have a little discussion later about asking the uh, school district to have an informational session up here. We'll let you know about that for sure. Claire? That would be great. Claire, your hand is up. Uh, one of the patterns of relationships that some people have noticed working in collaboration with the city is that uh, a kind of a lack of accountability of follow through. And I'm wondering if with your fresh eyes, <laughs> if you see any ways to um, to work on that, get traction on that problem. Yeah, I mean, I think in so many ways, the council job should be a real living wage job. Um, you know, in, for, in order for me to be able to do this, I have to work full time. And I've got kids, so I'm putting as absolutely as much time into it as I possibly can. And it takes an incredible amount of work. I'm usually okay. up till midnight, one o'clock every day, you know, reading and doing the work. Um, and so I think in many ways, it's like, I want to do everything and I want to follow through on all of these things. And we have, you know, 18 different items at any given point that are what I feel like is urgent, you know, noise thing is urgent. The, you know, we have a mental health crisis and that's why I joined the council is to work on this, you know, for mental health in our community. And um, I think it's just, there's so many moving parts and it is hard to keep track of it all. And so I, I, one of the best ways we could address that is make this a job, you know, a full-time job. And I don't, I know we don't have maybe the resources to be able to do that. Um, but that I think it would give people who are very skilled and knowledgeable, the opportunity to do that as a full-time job and put the attention, put all of that time and effort into following through with each of these things that I know all, I know all my council members feel the same, you know, similarly, like, I wish I could do this all day, every day. And I, I've, you know, I mean, I love my job at well mama and I don't want to give that up, but I recognize how, how much time my time is pulled um, away. So it's not a perfect answer, but, <laughs> and I don't really know how to fix that because I can't vote for that for myself, but maybe we could vote for that for the future council members. Um, Hi, Lindsay. Um, one question I have, you know, one of the challenges that we're facing on the ARCO board is a lack of um, interest in participation. Um, especially among the younger members of our community. You know, one thing I know that when you, when you first came on board, we were like, oh, she's in River Road, but you weren't part of ARCO. Why weren't you part of ARCO? And what recommendations do you have for us to try to get more younger people in our community involved? Because we don't want the same voices constantly speaking. We want to represent everybody. And yet we can't do it if people aren't stepping up and being a part of this. Absolutely. Um, I think for the most part, our young families are struggling a lot, struggling with the last few years of the pandemic and 
all the isolation. A lot of them are having mental health issues. I know that because I work with so many of them with my job at Well Mama. Um, and they're in this like time of their life that they're incredibly busy. And I know that because I'm living it still too. Um, you know, you're hustling back and forth from work and school drop-offs and activities, and it's hard to fit everything in. Um, I don't, yeah, I, and I came on, you know, fairly new and in, came into this um, area, you know, only a year ago. I don't really think that I was that aware of how active it was and, and what you you were working on. Um, so I, I absolutely think we need to do something to engage younger people in a way that they're able to, um, you know, seven o'clock in, in the evening, I know is a re- pretty a difficult time for young families with young kids. Um, and luckily my kids are getting used to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, how can we, how can we do, um, something that's, that's going to get the word out a little bit more to those people and really talk about the things that matter to them. Um, I think I I care about the neighborhood plan now that I really know about it. Um, but what, what's really affecting our younger people is that they absolutely cannot afford rent. They um, are often having to work two, three jobs just to to pay for living costs because it's extremely high right now, uh, but wages haven't increased. So if we start thinking about ways that we can support our younger people um, in our neighborhood and bring connection and community back in where they really feel like they're cared for, I think that could help. I, I don't think I... I think in this town, I, I was really excited about this feeling of connection when I came here, you know, 13 years ago. Um, then when I had kids, it almost felt like, I never felt like people wanted me there with my kids um, in a lot of community spaces that it was you know, not as welcoming as I wanted it to be. Um, And so one of my many missions in life is, you know, helping to create spaces that everyone feels like they can belong or that there's, you know, spaces that are for them and that, that they're cared for in in those spaces. So I was just talking to my staff at Well Mama about, you know, and maybe in this area, like a coffee shop that has like this kid's area that you, that people could just like come and like. And we were like, we could start it, you know, <laughs> and because moms need coffee, but they need a break. <laughs> so, again, I don't know if that answers it entirely, but they're having a hard time out there. John, we can't hear you. <laughs> I'm doing so well tonight. Um Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time. I'm sorry for the time I wasted while you were waiting. Um, Misty, do you want to get something in here? Are we at time? I'm sorry. Are we at time? Well, we're behind because of me. Go ahead if it's a quick one. Well, because it's John's fault, I'm going to ask another question Um, really quick. um, What's your experience? dealing and or advocating for uh, BIPOC communities and you, what's your understanding of their experience in our neighborhood? Yeah, absolutely. Um, One of the things I did right away, excuse me, when I came on to Well Mama was ask, you know, why, why are we not, you know, really focusing on our most vulnerable, you know, communities in a bigger way, because they are experiencing all of the things in a more intense way, because of any number of things, bias in the medical system and, and, you know, overt racism in our community. Um, So, and just in, in barriers like language. So I, first thing I did, um, one, one of the first things was to to start writing grants <laughs> um, to fund the the programs that we needed to. So we hired all bilingual staff um, for the majority of our um, group level services. Um, 
we did, you know, just a lot of equity work. And we've been really focused on what, how can we serve the people who need it the most? And if we can serve them, then we can also just serve the broader community as well. Um, because it, it's not going to be exclusive to them. Uh, so I just think that that framework is how we should approach all of our work that we're really only as strong as our, you know, weakest or our most vulnerable people. Um, and if we can build them up, then we'll build everybody up and we can all be on a kind of more level playing field. So I think it's incredibly important. I don't think the city has done enough, although we, I mean, I've heard some good things about the new um, equity center. So, but I have yet to, to go and engage in that work as much, um, but that is on my to-do list for sure. And if you have suggestions um, or more in-depth conversation about that. I would love to have that with you. Wow. What okay. is the new equity center? I've not heard of that. Um, okay. I need to get the name right. I think it's okay. <laughs> I just, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to, I'm not sure if you're aware, uh, ARCO has a social justice committee and uh, an emergency preparedness uh, committee team. They're both are very active. And yeah, I think that it'd be great for you to join one of our um, meetings at one of those groups as well. So thank you for being here, Lindsay. I would love to join. Um, oh, someone's <laughs> players of management, possibly. Yeah. So thank you um, for having me. Um, I. Would love to come back again sometime. Um, I know that it can be hard. So I hear there's rumblings of changing the time potentially um, to th that I may be able to join the general meeting, but obviously don't do that just on my, my part. <laughs> um, I've been uh, me meeting once a month as well with John. I'm hoping um, some of you can join as well. We we go to Oak Oakshire, we have a beer, and we talk about what is up and coming and what I can do to help you all achieve your goals. So join us. Dan? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Lizzie. Um, you know, I about a week ago at a public comment, uh, for city council, we heard um, someone suggest that um, there wasn't a real need for um, the social justice work that we're seeing in our city. And just last this past weekend, we um, here in River Road in Santa Clara experienced um, a bunch of incredibly anti-Semitic, hateful, disgusting uh, flyers that were put up. And I was wondering if you can speak to the need that our communities have um, and the importance of that work, um, as I'm sure that you are seeing um, and your role as a city councilor. It's absolutely important. I mean, I I was shocked and dismayed at hearing the reports. Um, they said over 50 people had called into the EPD about these flyers. So the, the good thing is that there's a lot of good people out there too, who are like, this is not okay. Um, and we have, we need more of that. We need to be as a community um, joining together and saying, we do not support this. Um, and, you know, only with very vocal outrage, are we going to be able to hopefully move forward? Um, because if you're not vocally um, saying, you know, your stance against it, then you're and you're doing nothing, then you are just helping to continue that process. You're not, you know, you're not making it better. You, you can make it worse by not doing anything. So we all have to do something. And, um, you know, I don't, I, I think we can make some statements at the council level now. And then um, I am, I'm going to, I can work with, I haven't been assigned committees yet, but I'm hoping that I'll be um, assigned um, committees that fall within my skills and, and um, experiences. And one of those is like the Human Rights Commission and um, Human Services. So I hope to be able to continue that work. Thank you for that. 
question, Dan. Lindsay, let's let you off the hook. Thank you very much. Appreciate John, can it. I, I want to respond um, to make sure. Okay. Lindsay, Lindsay, I'm not sure if you're aware, but in regards to the hate um, literature that's been out, there is a community, there are two community groups that have been leafleting anti-hate groups or anti-hate literatures in those neighborhoods following that. Mm -hmm. And that will happen again this weekend. Uh, if you could come and join us, that would be lovely. Uh, this coming weekend on the uh, my guess is it will be sunday again that's when we've been doing it before but um just so you know there is some feedback if you want me if you put your email in the chat i'll be glad to let you know um it's not something we put in public because we don't want to get bombed okay uh, so should i put my personal email or my city email then i i would not send it to a city email because we don't want it to be that public so there you go. There's my personal email. You're all welcome you. to send me. Um, yeah, any questions ever you have, um, please do contact me. Um, I'm here to support you and our neighborhood. So I appreciate your time and letting um, me come and talk to you tonight. Thank you, Lindsay, for you. basically giving yourself another meeting this week. Really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm used to it at this point. <laughs> Thanks for all you're doing. Yeah, take care. You too. Okay, um, let's move on to the consent calendar. Unless there are any announcements, we do have time set for announcements. Brenda? Uh, I was probably not here when you reviewed the agenda. We have not reviewed the agenda. We just jumped into it because we're so late. Do you right. want to amend the we agenda? I would like for us to add to the agenda the hate crime, the, the hate flyers that were pay, passed out and to talk a bit about how we'll be responding to that. I mean, I'm going to respond and I know the social justice team has been responding in the past, so I can fill you in if we if you give me five minutes later, I'll do that. Okay, let's do that. Don't let me forget. Let's I probably in. won't. Fair enough. Um, let's put it right after the consent calendar. So that'd be item, new item number four. Okay. Any further announcements or adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Thank you. So the consent calendar has four motions in it. One is to approve our last two meetings minutes. Thank you, Stefan, for doing that. Um, and if people have edits, we can make that happen. There's also a, an expenditure of $43.95 to renew our um, website with the host and up to $100 to be spent purchasing pizzas for tomorrow's. I have the date wrong. Evidently, recruitment event at Countryside um, also supports having... Um, Susan submit a submission for um, reimbursement for the last um, recycling event. And finally, uh, appointing two neighborhood representatives from the business community to the um, Navigation Center Community Advisory Committee. So if all those are good for you, then someone should make a motion to approve the, uh, the consent calendar. But Stephan I move to approve the consent calendar. I second it. And Susan seconds. Um, all those in favor, um, raise your hand. Either well, let's do the green. You're right. Let's um, go and put your green dot or your red dot on, depending on whether you approve. Um, Beth is green. I don't see Dan. I was getting to it. <laughs> I could get, okay. I the digital game. okay, unanimous approval. Thank you very much. Okay, the, the hate crime issue. Um, I did remember, Brenda. Um, don't forget to take your red green dots down. Um, I did send them, I did send you guys the materials that evidently were passed out so you could be aware of what we're talking about here. I also left a phone message and an email with 
Kate Purley, chair of, of Santa Clara, asking if they are going to plan to do anything. We would like to be informed so we can help out. I have not heard back from her. She's usually pretty busy during the day. But uh, let's talk a little bit about what we would do if we have an opportunity. Would you like to take that, Brenda? Uh, I would. Thank you. Um, Claire and I were both a part of what happens I'm trying to see if I can share a screen or not. Um, I'm going to take my little green dot down. Uh, if you'll allow me to share a screen, it would be much easier than having you have to look in the, in the uh, chat, John, if you can let that happen while I chat a minute. I think Claire has to do it. The um, Citizen Alliance for Lane County, CALC, and Surge, standing up for race or just racial justice um, have in the last six weeks organized two different distributions of literature following similar throwouts of Jewish anti anti Semitic information in Thurston. And I've been at both of those events. I called one of the organizers since um, after I talked to john this afternoon. And I will be at a meeting tomorrow at 10 with Gary and whoever you just mentioned from um, Santa Clara to plan what to do coming up. Um, what Rose said is, Serge, there are three different neighborhoods who are trying to respond. It sounds like maybe the friendly area also got distributions. Did we get those flyers in the River Road area? Not that I'm aware of. As far as you're aware? Okay. Um, they'll be back, and they're pretty good at following up later somewhere else. That's what happened in Thurston. They were in one area, then they were in another area about three weeks later. <clears throat> so, um, search is very careful. Uh, when, we, when we plan these uh, distributions, we meet someplace, we get together, we talk about how to be safe, we go out in groups, we distribute and offer this as uh, to people, to the neighborhoods that have, have experienced um, flyers. And sometimes people hadn't gotten the anti-Semitic flyers. And so we we're kind of informing them it has happened. The two times I went out, I got no, pot, no negative response. It was all, oh my gosh, this happened in our neighborhood. We're totally on board with you. Um, so, um, what, what I understand that they're looking for is, or what we're beginning to realize is that would be really nice after that kind of thing to also be able to say, as we hand somebody a piece of paper, you know, the river road community organization is following up or the Methodist church, Trinity Methodist church is having a potluck for community members that are in, interested or some kind of a follow up versus just, oh my gosh, this is happening, because it's getting a little bigger, it's going further. So there, I'm sure that'll be part of the conversation tomorrow. Um, if I can share, yeah. I asked John, I asked Gary, this is their response, and I just simply copied it up here, and want I want to move this and then we can discuss it or can it. I don't care, but at least it's a motion to put forward. Um, I would move that we, we as a board take, make a stance like this and um, go from there. Um, Sunday morning, anti-Semitic flyers were tossed on many driveways and lawns in the Santa Clara area. Flyers are in direct contradiction with making Santa Clara a welcoming community to all. The River Road Community Organization Board stands with our neighbors in Santa Clara in rejecting, then it's back to their language exactly, hatred and bigotry, bigotry in all forms and supports an individual's right to lead his, her, or their life without influence from perspectives that foster racial, ethnic, or other bias-based outcomes. So that next piece you have there, Brenda, did you want to put our social justice committee there or are you thinking it should be Santa Clara's? 
at this point, it's Santa Clara's that have had the um, the problem. I don't. Okay. Um, That's fine. I was just asking for clarity. Yeah, yeah. I would add some different numbers, but it wasn't my thing. So I just I started to write before I it was it, I started to write alert the river road. Um, I can't remember how we do this. Claire can help me. Can uh can can we have a conversation before we amend the document? Sure. Um, who's talked to the actual members of the Jewish community? Have y'all had any conversations with the folks at TBI, Temple Beth Israel, at the Jewish Federation? Yep, the, that how is... as an organization, mm -hmm. um, the Jewish community um, mm -hmm. is wanting to respond to this as a community. They have been in. Um totally in conversation with the with calc and with uh surge and have put out a a very um a very good statement or that we read <clears throat> uh at the beginning of the before we went out distributing things and they came to to they did the canvassing as well right numbers of them were part of the canvas people they were part of the people to canvassing right but since it's happened again you know uh -huh. just recently in this neighborhood I and you know I was literally at the temple yesterday before uh, I was aware of this otherwise I would have asked um you know I really would like to know uh if there is a broader more cohesive response that is being led by the community and the Jewish community itself um and I'd love to understand that myself before I would want to do anything that raises awareness of you know I I personally um have been targeted by anti-Semitism. And one thing I don't like is when people go and advertise that they're raising awareness for something that is not, you know, something that we want to raise awareness that, you know, we're not, we don't want to raise awareness about the fact of, of hate. Um, and so I, I just would like to uh, ensure that we are really talking to the members of the community that are currently being targeted. Thank you. So, Brenda, what I understood you to say is that they were involved in Thurston. Can you give us some assurance they'll be involved in the, this as well? I, I can't because I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't think it, if, yeah, it's if I'm a queer bad. person and you all are, are out to kill queer persons, I'm dead if the rest of the world doesn't stand up. If this is anti-Semitic, it's Christians but, and non-religious people that need to be standing up and saying, not in our backyard. It doesn't. I think do. I'm next in line and I can respond to that. Okay, I, Stephen, go ahead. Yeah. I'm on the board of Temple Beth Israel and, uh, uh, I, and, I, and I know the TBI and the Jewish Federation are very much appreciative and supportive of what Calc and Serge are doing. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to be concerned that the Jewish community would not like what is being proposed here. Thank and I also would second the motion. Okay, I was about to say we don't have a second. So so to clarify the motion, Brenda, are you suggesting we approve this specific language or a statement like this? I think at this point we can adopt this specific language you've just okay. basically cut out the middle of it and it would stop uh where my little dotted lines are here okay thank you for um, clarification I'm, I'm trying to move us along brenda right dan yeah i'm gonna go back to my the, the question that i i, I posed to Lindsay. um i know it wasn't um the the will of everyone to um to talk about it uh, a couple weeks ago when this was an issue before city council, but it seems to have um, found a uh, root because of it. Um, it. The fact of the matter is, is that somebody got in our, in our community and decided that um, our social justice work was essentially irrelevant, that we don't have a need for it in our community <laughs> and call this out by name that, um, and then uh, as to it being relevant. So I think that that needs to be included in the statement that um, there are members in our community who think this work irrelevant, and um, we would encourage those folks, anybody who agrees with their with that sentiment, to see the result of what has been going on in our community for the past 
well, forever, but more importantly during COVID and since then, um, and why it's so critical that not only we continue to fund that work um, on behalf of the city, but that it's residents and citizens in our neighborhood uh, volunteer for that work. Do you have that all written down? I'm trying to take nope. a note. <laughs> it's Dan, on the I, <clears throat> Dan, I'd prefer you to make that as an, uh, an amendment to the motion, because I'm not sure so, we should point all that out. So I have my I, hand up, and I'm, I'd like to speak to that. I'm I'm on my phone, so I can't type. I could re-log in and type something by in, in a few minutes, but or I can um, rework it in my head and 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 say it again. But I'll work with some language, but this is just while Claire's talking. Okay, yeah. Claire, your turn. Um, I don't think we. Sh I think we should say our neighbors and not specify Santa Clara because it's going to be us next. So you know, in our neighborhoods or in our immediate neighbors. Um, so I was a little bit confused about where Santa Clara was relevant and not relevant in this in this paragraph. That can be cleaned up. That's not a big deal. Um, well, yeah, period. So I guess I'm not quite sure what's intended to be said here. Dan, could you sort of say it and then we can find some language? You're, you're saying we should point out the individuals? Yeah. So what I would say is um, two weeks ago, we saw a member of our community suggest that the social justice work done by our neighborhood associations might be re irrelevant and it should be defunded. And just two weeks later, these flyers arrived on our doorsteps. A mm -hmm. couple points, Daniel. One, our work is not funded. But that's Charlie's problem. The, the, I, I don't think it's a good idea to mesh his the, that issue in with this because it's a different audience, or maybe it isn't. But I think that this needs our full attention and not to bring in um, well, you, a different about, you, issue. How about we get the statement in, in writing and then we can debate whether or not the, the statement needs to be edited, changed, or, or whatever. Can you text your statement to Brenda? Sure. Okay. I guess what I would what I would what I would say real quick in in response. Um, we it, it is funded because uh, the social justice committee is a part of ARCO, and ARCO received, although very small, right. uh, funding from the city. And it is a um, a direct component um, of of our work, and to attack us and well to attack, to attack the whole thing is an attack on one. It's an attack on all. I think that um, Joshua typed in my thing, but does that work for you? Are you down in the? Are you in chat? Uh, I would just just I, a second, please. Dan, is that does Joshua's language work for you? Is that what I'm you? Want? I'm I'm re I'm reviewing it now. Let me give me a second, and I'll I'll get it, I'll get it typed up. Um, let's see who's out here. Um, Stefan, Claire, and then me. I need to go. I'll be right back. Yeah, I was going to point out that I, I don't think there's been a second um, to the no, amendment. We're... And um, if there is, I would oppose it as just unnecessarily uh, complicating the message that um, Brenda's motion would have. I, I don't think we need to get into, into that. Yeah, we don't have a motion, uh, an amendment to the motion on the table, Stephen. But I thought that, I thought that's what's just been put in the chat. Um, that's a recommended language for an amendment. Well, Claire, we, need to, we either need an amendment or we need to vote on the motion. Stephen, I understand your point. I'm going to be a little loose here and try to get this done as efficiently as possible that's why it's taking so long is because we're being Stephen, let me move on please claire i'm pass i took Pardon? my hand down i took okay. my hand down. i got it so my statement is i think for the people who are going to get this flyer this is going to be just totally confusing and of not much value to them i think it detracts from our message and i'll if there is a motion i'm likely to vote against it what Maybe flyer you, are you what flyer are you talking about john the one that you're developing here this is not a flyer to be handed out 
Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was. Nope. I'm asking the board to take a stand. But uh, who is it being? Who is who's reading it? Who's it directed to? Uh, you would like any other board uh, motion. You would you would report it to the next general meeting. And I would suggest that we keep it as simple as what I had, because it is simply us standing with our neighbors. When it becomes ours, I do want something that's a lot more elaborate. And, but it's not the kind of thing that I want to do in 10 minutes and get on with their other work. Okay, so yes, for, we can do. Okay, for clarity, you were proposing that we take a position as stated here between our code condemns and the dash line. Yes. And that's what we have as a motion. Right. Um, Dan, did you want to propose an amendment? I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost done typing it. Okay. And you're gonna put it in the chat? Yep, but every time I talk, it erases it. I have to start all over again. I understand, sorry. <laughs> could put this down and go on to something else while he's typing. We could. Let's do that. Let's move on to the next item to the agenda, tabling this until we finish that item. So the next item on the agenda is. Yeah, my screen's hot. Last, last meeting. Oh, yeah, feedback from our last meeting. Does anybody have anything to share from our last meeting? What worked or didn't work? Or we can move on. Okay, let's move on to the next item which is discussion of preparation for election outreach and pizza, pizza social. Who's coming, Claire? This is yours. Okay, so far nobody's coming. So we're gonna we save money on pizza. <laughs> are you proposing we not have it after all? No, I. we don't know that nobody's coming. We didn't ask people to RSVP, so I think we need to show up. And if other people don't come, then we who show up can talk about how to remedy this situation. One thought I have is that we, we might want to postpone the election for another month. We don't have um, a choice. Well, I don't know about that, John. We've It's in our charter, Claire. We have left seats open from in the past for a month or more. Yeah, but it's in that the was after not filling them during an election. So how many seats do we actually have to recruit for? That's what I'm not clear about. Okay, we normally would have five positions open. I know, and but we how? Have one, we have one person who is resigning after a year, so that makes six. We but how five, many? We have five board members who have agreed to run again. Okay, so basically we need one new person. Is that Assuming that the minimum. ones who are standing are, are, are reelected, yes. Okay, so you know we're not we're not in dire straits. Um, uh, I just think this is a, a problematic issue that is long term and systematic that we need to figure out in the long term. So come and come on Tuesday, and we'll talk about it over pizza and figure it out. Tuesday is in tomorrow. Yeah. So remind us of. The, uh, you want to go around and ask who of us is available? That's a good idea. Uh, I have available for what? I've I have raised my hand. Can I ask a question? How did we get to the date of February 21? There was an email sent that we were all to be somewhere, but there was no request that I had seen. So unfortunately, I am unable to attend um, because I have something that I cannot schedule reschedule at this point. I'm just trying to understand how we got to this date. That was a suggestion from the ad hoc elections committee that was not very well communicated and their apologies are due. Okay. I just want to be real clear that we're not saying that we're not trying to do this work or anything like that. We just all yeah. have to 
a lot better right. plates as well. Right. Right. That said, so, is anyone coming <laughs> from the, on the current board other than me yeah. and John? I don't. Don't see any hands up. Okay. Well, John, I think we should show up, not order pizza unless somebody else does, shows up. Okay. Yeah, I think we should be there just in case people do show up. Yeah. Um, well, we have allocated a potential of $100. We don't have to spend it. Um, it's not my intention to buy pizza for Claire and myself. We probably couldn't agree on what kind of pizza we were getting anyway. <laughs> oh, I intend on being there, just FYI. I okay. I, but okay. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I think you mean, is anybody coming who might want to be recruited? Exactly. And we don't know because we didn't have a hard RSVP. So the three of us will show up. We'll talk to anybody who's there. And if they actually show up, we'll buy them pizza. <laughs> okay, so that's the recruitment part. Let's talk about how the how the prep for the election. Right, Fr Francis has her hand up. Yes, Francis. Why don't you meet why don't you meet at a pizza restaurant? We are. Oh, you are. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Countryside is, <laughs> is a idea. restaurant that serves pizza, although it's in their name. Um Claire, let's let's get the rest of it figured out. Um, um, I, I can help at least with how we're going to do the election per se, um, assuming that we have more, which is questionable, more candidates than we have positions than we need to hold an election. And we agreed a month or two ago to use election runner to hold that election, which is the computer program we used last year so successfully to have 150 or 200, I can't remember how many people vote. Joshua has agreed to manage that um, process. And he is working, going to work with, we're required to have two board members who actually count the votes. And Susan and Brenda have agreed to join with Joshua to do that election. Or if for some reason Joshua runs for the position, they will hold the election. But if um, we don't have more candidates than election, then we have positions, we can also move to elect everybody by acclamation. If there are more than enough candidates, we have to have a secret ballot. So that's why we would use election. So that's the technicalities as I know it. Back to you, Claire. Are there any questions about how we're going to work this out, Brenda? You're muted. Uh, yeah. Um, might have been with the John conversation earlier that do we not at this point have enough people running to fill the people, the empty spots? Is that what I've heard you say earlier today? Yes, no, I'm not hearing. If If Joshua decides to run, then we're good if um so i would that that's what i thought you had said so i would wonder if um joshua would be willing to do that in which case our plan is that we just do it by acclamation we don't walk into the meeting with controversy or a hole and um that would help us not have people who whose background we don't know or whose whose background we do know and are not really excited about jumping into the fray it doesn't mean that really in two months joshua or i or anybody else can't resign brenda that, i think um, that's that's joshua's decision to make in march Realize that people can be nominated from the floor, and that's that's custom. And I think it's I don't know if it's in a charter or not, but yes, um, it is. It's in our charter that people can be nominated from the floor. That's how I got on the board. Somebody nominated me, and I didn't know that was going to happen. Fortunately, it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, any further questions? as we move forward or should we go back to the uh, motion on the statement? 
Joshua? I just, have just one quick comment, and that is that the vote by acclamation can happen if there are less than the full number. It doesn't have to be exactly the right number. It's just the election only really has to happen if there are more than six people for six slots. Right. Exactly. Thank you, Joshua. Okay. I think if you look in your chat, going back to where we were, um, we have Dan's um, proposed language. I'll read it quickly. Last week before the city council, a gentleman suggested the city defund our neighborhood social justice work because it was essentially irrelevant. The next weekend, we saw hate filled flyers drop on doorsteps around town, including fireplace pellets signifying their desire to burn Jewish residents in ovens. We need our social justice committee work more than ever. We saw an unprecedented surge in hate crimes during COVID and since, and we need we need speak with one voice in our support of not only those targeted by this hate, but also those who dedicate their lives trying to rid our community of it. So are you making this there's emotion, Dan? I am, and there's, a, there's obviously a Scribner's error in there, but yeah, I am. Is, so, there, is there a second? Could you clarify again, is this Claire, we can't do anything until there's a second. I can't second it unless I know who's going to be reading this. Who is this for? Who's the audience? Um, this Dan? statement is a statement that will be made on behalf of ARCO, put on our social media page about what happened in our community. Okay, does that work? Are you comfortable with that amendment, Brenda? Not necessarily support it, but do you see how it fits into what you plan to do? You're muted, Brenda. Sorry, I couldn't find myself. Um, I will second his emotion, his amendment. Okay. Just so we can have a discussion about it. Um, okay. I don't see, I, I'm sorry, I did not communicate this very well. The flyers that we hand out have, uh, I would like the group to let us add to the flyers we hand out our website and Santa Claire's website because that's something local people can connect to, but not this program. This is just us as a board taking a stance. Okay, thanks for clarifying. So there's a motion and a second discussion, Susan. I do not support the language that you're using here. I am very, um, I get angered when I even hear that we're even continuing to spread language like including fireplace pellets signifying desire. That just infuriates me. Um, and so I would uh, not support this particular language. I would go back to more of the initial language that was supported. I think we're trying to tie too many things into it. And I do not think that it is impactful or, or helpful. Thank you. Um, to answer your question, Misty, I'm trying to get through this as fast as I can. Um, I only see my hand up. I'll reiterate what I said. I think this is inside baseball that people will not understand what it's about. And I think it'll detract from our message. And I apologize, Dan, but that's how I see it. Others? I don't take events. No big deal. <laughs> call a question. Let's vote. Okay. Well, let's not call the question. Let's just vote. All those in <laughs> favor of the motion. Well, if you call the question, that's another vote to call the question. Um, so if you support the amendment to this motion as put in the chat, you raise a green dot. If you're opposed, you raise a red dot. And I'm a no, but I can't find my button. Okay, it fails, Dan. Sorry. No worries. Thanks. Okay, we're now on the main motion as originally written by Brenda. Is there any discussion on that before we vote? And please lower your dots. You can see it, right? Is it yeah. still on the screen? Okay. It's on the screen. 
I don't see any discussion. So um, let's vote again, red dots and green dots. Green if you support the motion, red dots if you don't. I am up. Okay, I see your hand, Brenda. Um, Dan, I don't see a vote for you, and otherwise, we're we're good. I'm I'm pressing green. I don't know why it's not showing, yes, but it it did enough for me to say that it passes unanimously. Okay. So, Stefan, do you have the maker and the seconder for the minutes? I do. I'm going to need the text of the actual motion, though. Okay. I'll send it to you as an email. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Where are we in the agenda? Item number six. Planning for blended meeting and potentially changing meeting dates. So um, in the agenda, I put in some information. I have two questions here move to a hybrid meeting, and then do we want to change our meeting day? Um, the, the hybrid meeting question was asked at our last general meeting, and somewhere around 70% of the folks felt it would be appropriate to move to a hybrid meeting. Um, the, the, the question here is, um, should we agree to do that? And if we do, when should we do it? And then um, how do we make that happen? Um, it, when we when when should we do it? Meaning when should we start? Not which day of the week do we meet, right? Right, we're talking just hybrid right now. Okay, good. So I suggest we not add that to our management of the election in March, but instead we do it April or later. What do other people think, Brenda? As I said in an email somewhere, I think that in April, if we're going to go try doing hybrid, then the board should meet at the site. And we we are on Zoom and we see how that works before we invite the public to be doing a hybrid meeting. In other words, we have a really tight control on the hybrid part. And if it doesn't work for for the twenty, the six or eight of us, then you know that's the step that we do. I understand your concern. The setup at the um, annex has been used for their classes for months now, so I'm pretty sure it operates. The I, other, I'm not worried about it operating at all. About us operating. I'm it. operating. I'm talking about us operating. And okay. And we don't have, we haven't worked out the bugs of how we're going to make that work. Gotcha. This is somewhat complicated by the fact that we no longer have our board meeting date at the annex. The And our hesitance to meet the uh, park district um, out of, gave our second, excuse me, third Monday to a group and they're, they're meeting there now. So we can't meet there. That's we not couldn't. what Brenda That's Lindy. not what I asked. Brenda oh, yes, it is. Well, then I miscommunicated. No, this is, here's the deal. I'm sorry for stepping in, John. To test it out like you're suggesting, we would have to have the board meeting at the annex. We can't. No, we I'm not have... talking about the board meeting. Brenda, how do you suggest we do it? I'm suggesting that the next, in April, we have the general meeting on Zoom, but the board is at the annex seeing how the system works and testing it out on our regular general meeting. So at the general meeting, the people in this meeting are at the annex in person, but nobody else is. Okay, so I, I don't understand the advantage of doing it that way because people won't come to, because they won't be coming to the meeting. What's the advantage of that? If it falls apart, it's just us. And we haven't set a precedent that we're gonna have a public meeting and find that we can't manage it. But the meeting falls apart in either case. And it will be a public meeting because everybody else will be at the meeting. Well, you've all said it works just fine. 
I just think that running a hybrid meeting is not a piece of cake and we ought to step into it with gentleness. Well, if it's any reassurance, I can tell you that at least half a dozen neighborhood associations are meeting hybridly already. Um, I, I agree with the thing that uh, Brenda's raising. And I've said before that I go to hybrid uh, circles every month and they have a dedicated Zoom facilitator who brings those Zoom people into the room and be sure they get their fair share to communicate. And we have yet to designate that responsibility. So that's that's what we need to practice. And it's not, it's not an easy thing. You have to learn the technology to do it smoothly. So where are we going with this, folks? <clears throat> Well, I think we I'm need a motion on the floor so we know what we're discussing and can focus. Okay. Um, I move we move to hybrid meetings in April. Is there a second? I second. Discussion. Can you clarify, are you referring to board meetings only or general and board meetings or just? Um, we haven't gotten there yet. I suspect we will have to have our board meetings hybrid because we have, um, excuse me, um, via Zoom because we have no place to meet. Okay. So we're talking can we about. Just have, can we refer, can we just have this conversation be specifically around general meetings then to make yes, it? Yes, that was my assumption, but let's Thank let's you. clarify that. This is, this is for the general meeting. Thank you. Dan? Yeah, I, I just think that if part part of the struggles we've been mentioning all night is getting new folks to come in and come to the pizza event and learn about what it's like to be a board member. And I don't think that you can get a lot of the human interaction that we're trying to develop and the bonds that you're trying to create through Zoom. Um, I think you, you, you add um, a level of of ease and simplification and expediency, but you'll lose things as a result. And that's one of them. So I think we're going to, not that I'm saying that it, it can't, we, we can do without it, um, but uh, it will make that particular task and goal that much harder. Yeah, Brenda, um, there are two questions here and I don't think they're that intrinsically tied. Um, my my feedback for your concern would be we've had this concern for months and it's kept us from moving forward. I think we just have to step off the cliff and hope our parachute opens and we figure out how to do it. That's my thought. Okay. Um, hands are up. Beth. Uh, you're muted, Beth. I, I would agree with what Dan just said. I think it's really difficult over Zoom to establish those personal relationships and feel like you really belong to a group. And so uh, the um, hybrid would give us the opportunity to invite new people to come actually meet the people that are their neighbors as opposed to just seeing a voice and trading words over Zoom. Thank you. Um, Dan, is your hand still up? Nope, sorry. Okay, Brenda. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a, I have two heads. One is, why don't we just go to in-person meetings and not hybrid? My reaction would be that uh, that's become the norm, that city council, county commission. Okay. Or but also a third, of, vote. a third of the people said they wouldn't come to in-person meetings only. Yeah, and, we had to vote for that and, Right, and it does expand the um, ability of a lot of people to, to attend. Okay. Francis? Um, <clears throat> in my experience with uh, just starting to have meetings in person again in our co-housing group, um, a lot of planning and, and thought had to go into creating the in-person um, uh, ambiance and, and, you know, it's, 
you want people to feel like it was worth it to come. I mean, it's easy to get on Zoom and you can check your email and you know you can be cooking and the people coming to an in-person meeting, they're giving up that whole time. And so it's really a very, the quality of the meeting has to be different and, and more interactive, um, more engaging. Uh, so there's a, I think, you know, there's got to be some intentionality behind that, not just assume that you just translate what you do on Zoom and have and do it in person. Um, so just giving that feedback. Okay, Joshua. Yeah, sorry, I know it's unorthodox to be a not board member and have a comment, but I really like Brenda's idea. I think it's really smart to do a technology run through. So I just wanted to say that. Well, we certainly can do that. And I think if we do vote to meet in April, we should form a committee to make sure that happens. <laughs> okay, any further discussion on the motion? So the motion for the board is, do we move to having hybrid meetings at, uh, in April? And then we'll worry about when that event when that event takes place but for now we're just talking about going hybrid in april so red and green folks um missy are you still with it oh there it is no okay um it's unanimous. We will have our hybrid meeting somewhere in April someday. So now that we have that behind us, let's talk about those things. Um, let me go back to what I had shared with you. First of all, the reason that we're looking to potentially change our date is because city council meets on the second and fourth Mondays um, and they have public forums on those meetings. On the third Monday is typically when they have their public hearings. So Mondays are a terrible time for us to meet. That's pretty clear. I checked with the county commission. They're not meeting on in the evenings anymore. So there's definitely impetus to move to another date. The question is where? Um, right now, we still have the second Monday at 7 p.m. available to us at the annex. Um, as I said earlier, they've given away our third Monday meeting reservation. The two dates that they had potentially available for us to meet at park facilities are the second Wednesday in the annex, but we can't start until 745 um, because there's a class that goes till 730. Or the second Tuesday in the Emerald Park multi-purpose room, which is a very large room, um, but they don't have the setup for the internet, but we could use the OWL, which is a tool that the city has available, which is a device that sits in the middle of the room, turns to whoever is speaking, provides um, not quite the same level of support that the setup at the, the annex would, but it's working for several neighborhood associations. So if we're going to meet at the in a park facility, we would have to shift our meeting time to either the second Wednesday, second Wednesday or second Tuesday. So let's open that up for discussion. What do people think? Raise your hands and I'll call on you. Beth. So John, just a question. You probably checked it, but I just wanted to verify um, the schedule that they've given you. Does that apply also after they put out their next schedule, their spring schedule, uh, or is it just for January through March? That's a good question, Beth, and I'll be honest. I assume that if it were potentially changing, they would have told us, but I didn't ask. So I don't know. I can go back and ask that question. And certainly if we're only gonna be, move to a meeting in April, um, that might have value. I can ask Kennedy tomorrow. That would be great. Thank you. Other folks? Brenda. It, it's, it, it is still possible. 
according to what you sent out, that we could meet. We're gonna we're gonna change from Zoom to hybrid. I think we should stay at the same time till we get this down, and not mm -hmm. try to make a whole bunch of changes all at once, and stay on our second Saturday, second Monday at seven, and do the Zoom on that Monday. Now I'm fine with not having board meetings on a Monday. You can have another Monday to go to the city council, but I think that's too much at once. And if we're talking about when do we meet, Lindsay made me think, why don't we meet Sunday afternoons at five o'clock, see if we can meet at the Emerald Park or somewhere where we can do childcare. We want different people to come. We need to work differently. Okay. But that would take some moving towards that going on our Monday meetings for a while till we got that put together. But if we would be like Sunday afternoon at, from five to 6.30, it allows a whole different bunch of people to possibly come join us, especially if we provided free childcare. Okay, so essentially what I'm hearing you say, Brenda, is let's go to our second Monday as we had in the past until we do more thought about if we change our meeting when would it be and that would again if we went to uh, i'm not saying that's a, a deal breaker but we'd also still have to find another place to meet on sundays if we that's what we did anyhow other other thoughts stefan i move that we keep meeting on um keep the general meetings on monday the second monday as they are now at the annex okay and continue looking for others i guess that doesn't have to be in the motion it doesn't have to be in the motion okay is there a second stefan's motion sorry Brenda, this is susan I, I second it okay susan seconds it so the motion is that we um continue to meet on our second monday we've already decided in april we'll move to a hybrid meeting but that's neither here nor there but for now we will stick with second monday and at least i will try to find another way for us to meet another time but we can figure that out later any further discussion um stefan your hand still up no beth yeah, I would like to see that part put into the motion, John, that we would continue to look for another date that didn't conflict with city council. Okay, so you're proposing an amendment to the motion? That we continue to look at another time that uh, does not conflict with city council. So okay, I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Like I don't think okay. it's necessary, but I'll accept it as a friendly amendment. Okay, and did I make the motion? No, I did. Okay. And let's see, Susan seconded. Are you okay with that, Susan? Yes. Okay. So we won't do the rigmarole of um, formal um, Robert's rules. We'll just make the change. So the motion now is that we continue to meet second Mondays, but we continue to search for a better date. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, then red dot, green dot. I have a message that Misty has left us, so we won't wait for her vote. Um, it is unanimous. Thank you. Okay. I'm here. Sorry. And your vote is yes or no? I'm green today. Okay. Yes. Uh, John, it is 8.30. Do we want to have a check-in on the agenda and how we're Good extending question. the meeting? So we have item seven, asking 4J to hold an info session for North Eugene High School, time sensitive and then plan future meetings. Would you want to propose extending 20 minutes? 10. 
Okay. Without objection, we'll extend the meeting for 10 minutes. If someone wants to make it a motion or oppose the decision, speak now. But in the desire to move forward, let's do that. Okay. Um, you're up. Um, Beth, there's a motion in the agenda that um, one of us should put up, I guess. Claire, you want to give me the... Uh, oh, sure. Come on. I assume I can't, since I can't see anything, it's probably there. Yeah, it's there. It's really small if you can make it. Give me a second. All right. That's too much here. Can you see it? Unfortunately, if I squint. There's a, page, there's a page break. Well, it's full screen here. Um, let me. I'll put change a page my. Break. Here we go. Okay. Wow, is that good or bad? It's good. It's fine okay. with you. Okay, Beth. Yeah. Okay, thank you, John and Claire. Um, this is really um, brought up because of the misinformation, confusion about what's going on with North Eugene High School. And I think that um, we've heard a lot about people saying at the last meeting that they don't feel as though they've had the opportunity to give input. And I think that's probably true. Um, but uh, I went to a meeting on Friday, the subcommittee for um, 4J that was looking at, am I still on? I just lost my picture. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay, okay, my picture just went away. Um, anyway, uh, where it was North Eugene or it was, uh, um, Kelly and YG talking about that and it was a subcommittee they did not have parents or kids there giving input and there was a lot of confusion among the teachers in terms of what was going to happen with their school that discussion is deeply tied to the North Eugene school building and what's going to happen and so um, first of all I was still on the board when the bond discussion happened about building a new North Eugene High School. We have been, the board has been talking about that facility since 2018 and before. And so I thought it would be helpful uh, in discussion with Alicia Hayes, who's one of the board members, to have uh, 4J facility staff come to a meeting in our neighborhood uh, who could talk about the history of the bond, the discussions that were had at that time, what's going on now and how things have changed and how Kelly and YG might fit into either maintaining or um, demolishing North Eugene High School. And without any prejudice either way, but rather talk about the pros and cons of either decision. Uh, it would be important to get outreach to neighbors uh, in some way, and uh, it's important, I think, to have it in the River Road community, the meeting in the River Road community, as opposed to down at the Ed Center, which is where a lot of those discussions happen, and people don't necessarily feel comfortable going to that location. So that's the impetus for uh, drafting a letter that would go to the district, and I would be happy to work with anybody from the district in setting it up. Uh, and would depend on all of you to 
um, get the message out in, in whatever extra way could happen. The, a decision needs to be made by May because of the funding stream for it. But there's, there's confusion about the costs and just a whole lot of things that, that aren't understood. And some people are saying we don't need more field space. North Eugene doesn't really care about athletics. And I know from my experience when my son was at North that that's definitely was not the case then. And my guess is it hasn't changed. So would you like to make this motion, Beth? I will make the motion. Okay, as written. Okay, yes. is there a second? I see Brenda's thumb up. So Beth made, Brenda seconded. Claire, will you do the discussion because my screen is my screen. I don't know what that means, but fine. I, I can't see everybody. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, okay, uh, anybody wanna speak on this issue? There's still some green dots out, by the way. Yeah. I don't see anybody else's hand, so I'm gonna say my piece, um, which is that I don't really know if it's necessary to hear the whole history of the debate since, you know, for the past five years, uh, Beth, <laughs> for those of us who haven't really tracked it. And I, I think that the main issue is what is the best use of the space? and that I don't know what proposals are on the board. I hear it's gonna be torn down and turned into a soccer field. And I hear other people saying, yeah, but yeah, but tearing down an existing build building is ecologically bad decision. And we need buildings for public space and we need housing and ARCO doesn't have a meeting place. So don't tear it down. So I feel like that kind of conversation should be had. And I agree with you that it should be in the community. Yeah. And I wasn't really suggesting a full history, but rather, um, you know, how we got to where we are in terms of the, the uh, North facility, why, why that decision was made to begin with, and what the discussion, briefly what the discussion was around, at the time it was YG and Corridor, because the Silver Lee building would, would be gone. So um, I, I just, you know, there were some assumptions that were made when the bond was passed that people uh, felt were going to happen. And if those things aren't going to happen, then why not? So I agree with you, Claire. I think a, a good discussion of what's the best use of the, of the space uh, is one that the community would benefit from hearing. And since the community pay has been paid the bond, isn't there any kind of official legal way that we're supposed to be part of that conversation. So Claire, we now have two minutes left of your 10 minutes. Can I move on? Well, we should vote on this. Did everybody vote on it? No, we haven't voted. We're in discussion. Okay, I'm done. Brenda? Um, I'm curious, Beth, how many people you think would show up with this? Is it like a River Road community organization size? people or are we talking about hundreds of people and I, and my thought in the chat was what if this was our april meeting it's a way of stepping outside of our normal people and making ourselves aware and being the host of this meeting as a river road community organization well and that's a possibility it uh, uh north eugene also of course draws from santa clara and right. so it would be reaching out to the Santa Clara Community Organization to get their involvement as well. And uh, I had, there was another piece for the April meeting and that has to do with the May school board election that's mm -hmm. happening. And right. uh, it would be my preference to do this discussion, this motion discussion uh, apart from our April meeting and to vote I'm speaking for myself only, devote our April meeting to the school board election, which is an absolutely critical piece for our community. That's fine. Susan, did you have your hand? No, I just would love it if we could go ahead and vote, please. I think we're talking a lot about it. And don't need to. Yeah, nobody else has their hands up. Okay, with no further discussion, let's vote.
Beth, you put your hand up. Was that supposed to be a vote? That's a vote. Oh, okay. I, sorry. I'll put my green dot. <laughs> and I can't get mine up, so that it's a yes as well. Okay. So we are all in favor of doing this. Thank you very much for bringing this to us, Beth. Yeah. Okay, last item on the agenda, and we'll need to vote to extend, um, is um, the items for our future meetings. Um, so would someone like to move to extend the meeting another time? No. So we won't have any meeting next month. We don't have a board meeting next month? A general meeting. We don't have a topic. In March, we have the vote. In April, do we have to decide that right now? No, but we, we need something other than a vote for our March meeting. I okay, well, I, I had proposed that we would do the recycling event in March, I but then that. I okay. saw that there was, was going to be in April. So if y'all want another topic, I'd love it to be the recycling thing so people have time. I thought that I was being pushed to April. So clarification, is the recycling event in March or April? The event is in April, but we have to teach people about the event, and I'd like to do that more than five days in advance. Okay. Last year we did, Josh just made the comment, last year we devoted the entire meeting to the election. We don't know if we're going to need to do that at this time, do we? Um, we did devote the entire meeting, but it, we ended early as well. So... Um, it could very easily be a vote by acclamation, and then what do we do with the rest of the hour and a half? So Again, I there, propose I will happily do it in March or April. Okay, so I'm sorry, Susan, I didn't remember that. I just added it to potential topics. So what we have is discuss recycling for the event. Um, asking the Eugene Code Enforcement staff to let us know what's going on with Zippo. I want to put their feet to the fire. Um, at some point in the time, we can we have an ask from LTD's general manager to discuss their new community assessment, this new direction for LTD, including a change in moving ahead. Um, I channeled Jan here and put spring planting as a possibility here. Um, the discussion about the neighborhood plan is not going to be right. We may or may not re-invite Ryan Seneca to come back to our meeting. Um, evidently, they had an emergency executive session. That's why he didn't make it. And then um, we also have a new project director at the Navigation Center. We, we aren't lacking for topics. Do you want to, for sake of convenience, assign this to the co-chairs or anybody else who wants to decide how we're going to spend that meeting what's your preference we also could have some an, some anti-semitic things that we have decided are important we don't get to control that in the next three weeks also true so um would someone like to suggest how we move forward here since we are I move that i move that we delegate to the co-chairs to uh program the March meeting. Is there a second? I second. Okay, further discussion. I'm tempted to say all those who were in favor leave, but <laughs> who seconded? Claire. Claire. Discussion? Okay, all, fav all those in favor of delegating the decision of what we will do with the March meeting Red dots, all those opposed, or yellow, green dots, all those opposed, red dots. And my dot is green if I could do it. Claire, how do we look? Um, we have, they're still coming in. We have five greens. And I guess, Stefan, you haven't voted? Hey John, on future vote. Sorry, on John, uh, on future votes, why don't we just vote by acclamation? So if, we, if yeah. anybody objects, then we can kind of move forward. Uh, we, that way we can just bypass. Yeah. You know? Yep. Okay. 
Um, everybody has voted in the positive. We assume that passed unanimously. I think the only person who's not voting is Misty, and I believe she is indeed gone. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I'm sorry I got us off to such a wrong foot this morning, this afternoon, this evening, this morning, whichever. Um, but we got a lot done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just a reminder, the link is always on the calendar of the electronic newsletter. Thank you. All right. I, swear I thought I got it, but obviously not. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you.